Hey hobbyists, Scott Page here, and this is episode 5 in my video series about OpenTX 2.0 and the transmitters that use OpenTX 2.0. I hear there are many people wanting to join the 2.0 party, but are intimidated after hearing about problems or rumors of problems with the upgrade process. I feel I need to put these warnings into perspective. There have been literally thousands of people who've successfully upgraded to OpenTX 2.0 without any issues at all. Obviously, these people don't have reason to seek help or post their lack of issues to RC groups or other forums. They're the truly silent majority. But with any technology, there will be occasions when things don't go quite as planned. These are the ones we hear from in the online forums. Fortunately, there are many very helpful people in RC groups and other forums who are happy to help get the train back on the tracks in case things don't go quite right. Using screen sharing software, I've had the privilege of helping folks from all around the globe who have gotten stuck partway through the update process. I would hazard a guess that I've seen just about everything that can be done wrong. I can group these problems into just three things. One, Frequently they lack the patience and they start doing things before they know what they're doing or they lack the patience to allow the computer to finish doing one process before they try to do the next. Two, there are some computers with a certain USB 3.0 driver that seems to have problems with the upgrade. Every single one of these that I've encountered has been a Dell XPS laptop. They're great laptops in other respects, but they seem to be argumentative when installing Zadig. The third thing is people who are using their work computer and the IT department installed a USB firewall. So today, I want to show you the right way to do it with a home-built computer that has USB 3.0. And this will be the maiden flight for this computer so far as RC is concerned. Before I do this, I want to mention a very valuable online resource for transmitters running OpenTX. And that is the OpenTX University. I gotta say that the name OpenTX University was coined tongue-in-cheek. It was never to give the people the impression that using OpenTX required an advanced degree. OpenTXU has a tremendous set of resources and the volunteer staff are creating new and better stuff all the time. So now to the task at hand. My objective is to use a computer that has never seen a Tranus, Companion 9X, OpenTX Companion 2.0, or any of the drivers associated with the software or hardware, and then do an installation straight through start to finish. I hope that if you have not installed OpenTX 2.0, this video will give you the guidance and courage to give it a go. I have a brand new Tyrannus that has the stock firmware on it, and I'm going to upgrade it on a computer that has never seen a Tyrannus and never seen any of this, and I'm going to start right from scratch. So I'm going to start off by going to my browser, I'm using Chrome. I've pre-configured the tabs to make this easier for me. And I'm going to start off at OpenTX.org. Go to the downloads. The first download I'm going to go to is way at the bottom. It's Zadig 2.10, which is the one that I'll, I'm going to need, the driver that I'm going to need. It takes a little longer to download. So I'll get it started. And then I go back and I'm going to go again to Downloads, and I'm going to get OpenTX Companion uh, 2.0.12, and I'm doing this on Windows, so I'll choose the Windows installer. If I go to Show All Downloads and close that, drag these out to the desktop, and now I'm going to go ahead and install Companion. The transmitter is sitting next to me, it's still turned off, and I can launch Companion, make sure it's going to work. Okay, so Companion works. I can delete that installer, I don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to go ahead and open the control panel, because what I need here is the device manager. I can go ahead and close the control panels now. And the, kind of the key is, I like to watch this device manager, that helps me to see what's going on with these USBs. And uh, I don't have anything there that has to do with the Tranus. So I'll go ahead and I'll take the Tranus. It is turned off, and I'm going to plug the USB into it. And it's going to start installing uh, driver software. STM32 bootloader comes up in other devices. I need to be a little bit patient here because I want to wait 
and that might take it a minute or two. And it doesn't really give me any indication that anything's happening except the cursor's flashing. I think that a lot of times people maybe at this point they get ahead of themselves. There, now I get the STM device in, in boot mode and I see it is right there, STM device in DFU mode. Now that's actually not where I want it. I need it down below, but that's where the next part comes in, which is Zadig. I'll go ahead and start that up now. And I'm going to, I don't need to look for any updates online. I want to go to list all devices and choose the STM32 bootloader. And if everything goes well, I should be able to click replace driver. And this will process for a minute or so. And looks good. Because what happened now is I see that I have a USB device and I have STM bootloader here. At that point, I shouldn't need Zadig anymore. And I should be able to find my um, OpenTX companion. I'm going to go ahead and pin that to the taskbar so I can find it easy. And click on that. Now, the first thing I'm going to need to do in Companion is get my settings set up correctly. Now, I have a regular Tyrannus in this case, and I want to be sure. This has been a problem for some people. They've been choosing the Plus when they have a Tyrannus. If it doesn't say Plus in the front, it's not. It's a Tyrannus. And um, I have some choices here. Let's stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to leave uh, no Haley alone, no global variables. I'll leave it alone. I don't have Haptic. I do want... Uh, Lua, uh, no joystick I'll leave alone, PPM microseconds I'll leave alone, font, channel override, I'm going to leave that alone. And FAI choice and FII mode, I need to mention really quickly, those will disable your telemetry, so you don't want to have those checked if you want to be using telemetry. So that looks good. I want to click here so it'll offer to write the uh, firmware after the transmitter is downloaded. And I'd like to put the version number on the firmware name. And I'll click OK. Now we'll go over to this button here, which says Download. I'll click on it. Well, let's go ahead and hit Download Firmware. And it'll take those settings that I have and download firmware just that, uh, that I need. I'm going to put it on the desktop. And it downloads it fairly quick. And now here it offers to write it to the transmitter. I say, yep. And I'm just going to take the standard Write to Transmitter. And if things go well, I'm going to see a progress bar, and I do, so I'm kind of excited this is going well. And the progress bar takes a few minutes, and I'm going to speed this part of the tape up, so you don't have to wait through the whole thing. Okay, we're done. Click OK, I'm done with that. And then if I put my mouse over here, it says Read Models and Settings from Radio. And if I click on that, it's going to go, No radio was found, and I panic because no radio was found, but it's telling me, I now have a new way of hooking this up. I have to press my trim tabs to center while I power up in order to do this. So I'll click OK, and I'm going to disconnect the transmitter from the computer. Anytime I do that, I want to be sure to go to this safely remove hardware and eject media. Click on that, and I'll tell it to eject the STM32 bootloader. It says it can now be safely removed, so I unplug the transmitter. So now I'll go ahead and click these together, turn it on, and it now reads uh, Tyrannus Bootloader 2.0.12. It says write firmware. As soon as I plug in the USB to it, it now says USB connected. And I can see that it's installing some software, so I'm going to be patient for a minute and let it go ahead and do this. And it's got a removable drive, and that's going to be the uh, SD card which is inside. Let's go ahead and open that up to look at it. And Tyrannus, that is the drive which I call the no-touchy. And uh, because that's got your EEPROM. Now your EEPROM is separate. I'll go ahead and close that. EEPROM is separate from your SD card. And I want to be sure that's, that's kind of clear. Okay. Now I had downloaded the firmware. It's right here. So open up the firmwares. The directory is empty. This is the firmware that I downloaded a little bit ago. I can copy it into that firmware. 
directory, the firmwares, it's plural. And then uh, if for some reason I need to flash that firmware without using a computer, it's right there available to, to do from the bootloader. Okay, uh, basically we're done. I'm going to verify now that the transmitter has the proper uh, firmware on it. Uh, before I do that, I want to disconnect it. I'm going to go to Safe Re Remove Hardware and Eject Media again. You'll see it has a little different dismount this time. It has it lists both removable disk and the Tyrannus. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. When it says Safe to Remove Hardware, I can now unplug my Tyrannus and I can go ahead and shut it off. Well, this is Scott Page reminding you, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff.